Hello, and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager. And in this week's Weekend Essay Podcast, we have news editor Michael Climes asking, is deja vu a sign of aging? Take it away, Mike. I'm fortunate in that I have an excellent memory for quotation from films that I like. One of my favorites is The Matrix. Among the many memorable scenes in it, is one that involves a black cat. The hero Neo passes. The transcript is as follows. Neo. Whoa, deja vu. Trinity. What did you just say? Neo. Nothing. I just had a little deja vu. Trinity. What did you see? Cypher. What happened? Neo. A black cat went past us, and then another that looked just like it. Trinity, how much like it? Was it the same cat? Neo, might have been, I'm not sure. Morpheus, Switch, Apoc. Neo, what is it? Trinity, deja vu is usually a glitch in the matrix. It happens when they change something. I have now been writing about pensions long enough to have a strong sense of deja vu when I see a series of seismic pensions announcements. If you have been covering a topic for a while, you become familiar with the landscape and its weather patterns. And since I've been writing about pensions since September 2014, I certainly have a feeling for its themes. Familiarity with something comes from experience and experience is due to age. The passage of time has been in my mind at various points the past year, with the death of my grandmother last November. My nephew has been growing so fast as well, and I've noticed that white hairs have started to appear on my sideburns. They have made me more subconscious that I'm aging too. The days, weeks and months also tick by faster than they used to, and clarify what the priorities are and give time for reflection. I have been fortunate in my career to cover two really big pension stories. The first is the collapse of the BHS retail store due to poor management and the consequential plight of staff pensions. This is the only story I've covered that transcended my trade press background to become a national story. It captured the imagination of the public as it culminated in a select committee standoff between a socialist parliamentarian and a bullish retail tycoon. The MP was Frank Field, who faced off against the billionaire Philip Green in a committee room that had a queue of people lining up outside to attend. Back in the summer of 2016, Field was chairman of the Work and Pension Select Committee that investigated the collapse of BHS. He was a formidable leader with knowledge of the subject, eye for detail and combative, but he was also collegiate and gave all his fellow MPs time to ask their questions. Field style was the right blend of get things done, but in a cooperative way. This was my first time reporting at a select committee hearing in person. It was quite a thing to watch witnesses go up against a a determined group of MPs to get to the bottom of what occurred at BHS. One regulator I knew did not return a smile I gave them after their appearance at an evidence session. This told me all I needed to know about what it's like to be at the end of such an interrogation. But at ringside, so to speak, I had a marvelous experience getting to grips with how the committee worked. I learned how to read complex documents, take rapid fire notes and report quickly. Some of the characters I saw and quotations I encountered were extraordinary. And every witness that was called was more memorable than the predecessor. It all culminated in the face off between Field and the former owner of BHS who was Green. Field had a reputation of not suffering fools gladly and Green had a reputation for saying what he thinks. They had not been exactly warm towards each other in the build-up 
to their committee showdown either. I, re I remember their interaction at the committee being highly enjoyable, at least for me. The second big story I covered is the British Steel Pension Scheme scandal. This involved rogue financial advisors giving unsuitable advice to steel workers to transfer out of their generous fi final salary schemes. The experience here was different as the story did not take me to the heart of Westminster, but to Port Talbot in Wales. I still remember the long and delayed train to Wales that involved a brand new train having a power cut and taking an old one to this seaside Welsh town dominated by the steelworks I passed on the way in. The size of the steelwork, the size of the steelworks remains a very powerful image in my memory. I also could not help but mention the connection they supposedly have with Blade Runner director Ridley Scott in a piece I wrote for Money Marketing. The lasting impression from the trip was seeing firsthand the best and worst of the advice sector in one day. I went down to Port Talbot to meet some of the victims of the BSPS scandal to understand what happened to them. The day had been organised by advisor Al Rush, who intervened to help steel workers when he discovered what was happening. He offered pro bono advice to them through an initiative called Operation Chive. One of the sessions that day involved a group of steel workers questioned about their experiences. They were all asked what happened. I will never, I will never forget the sight of a fully grown man answer by crying about the loss of his pension. The feeling of shame, betrayal and vulnerability expressed was harrowing. I was taught the importance of advice and how it can lead to life-changing outcomes for better or worse. This is especially true if a defined benefit transfer is involved, as the decision once taken is irreversible. Since covering BHS and British Steel, I've covered other smaller stories that have contained the same themes the larger, as the larger ones. Pensions might look boring, but are important. Speak to a financial advisor if you can afford one. And a niche can give you an exciting career. And finally, things do change in pensions. But in a way that is familiar after you've covered them long enough. It's that deja vu again that comes from experience due to age. Thanks, Mike, for another great weekend essay podcast. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition, Money Marketing Mag. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next time.